It's July 6th. Welcome back to Redness Day here at Mob Vlog. It's Adam Flowers, and um, we're going to talk about uh, Robert Cooley. Robert Cooley. For those of you who know, he is great because I've heard the name a bunch of times, but we've never taken a really, you know, dive in uh, to this guy. So that's what we're going to do today. And if you're new to the channel, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. That's how we say it around here. It's Mob Vlog. <music> Red we met. how are you doing today? I'm doing good. <laughs> Fantastic. It's going to be a good day. We're going to talk about that Bob Cooley. We're going to, oh, we're going to spin the wheel. That's right. The wheel of a deal you can't refuse. Thank you, Bobby Bag of Donuts. <laughs> we have a trivia question for you. So I hope you guys have been paying attention to the last episode because this episode, Red and I sat around last night. Well, what's the question going to be? What's the question? He changed the question on me. <laughs> I didn't change it on you. I just said, you know, here's what the question's going to be, but here's what it could have been. Right. It could have been, it could have been something much different than what we actually went with, but we'll tell you what that is <laughs> as we get going here. Yeah, oh, Red's cracking up already. I can tell today's going to be a hell of a day, man. He took his happy pills. You can see he took his happy pills. <laughs> I had a hell of a morning. I talked to a lady that I haven't talked to in so long. And she told me this morning, she said to me, um, and I'm, I'm working on the new tour and, um, and, and I'm going to go to this area I used to live in. And I lived at this lady's house, She's the nicest lady in the world. But I told her what I was doing. She said, oh, Tony Spilatro. I remember Tony. You know, he was such a nice guy. He was on the PTA with us here in town. No. And she said her no, she said her son, they would come home from school and say, we have to be nice to Tony's son, to Vincent. So we have to be nice to Vincent because everybody's bullying him in school saying that his dad's a gangster. <laughs> we got to be nice to him. Oh, my gosh. The stories that she has. Anyway, this is pretty wild, Red. I mean, pretty cool stuff. So welcome in, everybody. Uh, we're going to be talking about Bob Cooley today. Um, and who was a, what was he, a police officer first? In the beginning, yes. Right? So first his was father was a police officer. His father was a police officer. I believe his brother was a police officer. He became a police officer. Then he became an attorney, and then he became an FBI informant. And both of his grandfathers, they died in the line of duty. Right. Both of his grandfathers were. So he came from a family of police officers. Right. Isn't that, isn't that kind interesting? Of a legacy. Kind of a legacy. He was a legacy. Isn't it interesting? We talk about the, the criminals, and we talk about the um police officers law enforcement and there's such a fine line it's like the, these guys have the same superpowers but one side uses it for good the other side uses it for evil and the shit runs in the family yes <laughs> they used to say we used to say the difference between a crook and a cop is the badge yeah there you go see so it's, and it's even frank said that frank said something about they're not much different no, there really isn't. There really isn't. Hey, Greg Bradshaw won last week. We got the wheel of a deal you can't refuse. We're going to spin that later on today. And uh, we have a trivia question from last week's show. So, Gr Greg, though, he want to believe this? He wanna I hope you guys got a good memory because. <laughs> <laughs> What's the trivia question? What did Greg win last week? No, er, that's not the trivia question. It will be in 12 weeks from now. <laughs> so uh big mo hey red adam thinking about coming to vegas next week i want to do the tour big mo you go down to the bottom of the screen there and go to the vegas specialty tours and you put in mob vlog with your promo code and that'll give you 20 percent off on the tour so it's a great tour 
really is. You'll like it. You'll like it. No, it really, it really is getting to be really. I'm not that I'm tooting my own horn, but you know, I'm tooting my own I'll horn. I'll toot it for you. I'll toot it for you. It's a great. You guys ought to take this tour. It was fantastic. I recommend it 100%. I love the Frank videos. Those were great. Personal stories. Yeah, I mean, personal you stories. Very close with Frank Colotta and you get, you get the vibes. You got to do this. Oh, hell, the best part of my trip out here. It's uh, everything about casino that you wanted to see, and it's cool to see see it all. This was like fucking authentic. It was amazing. Awesome, awesome. Oh, unbelievable. Adam is just first class, great information, great tour, fascinating. 10 out of 10. Take okay. the tour, you'll have a great time. You're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna have a awesome. fun time too. Absolutely great. It was awesome. I would definitely recommend it. It was good to learn about the history. It was awesome, man. I enjoyed it. Fantastic. I, I, I loved it. What'd you think, Mo? It was great. Yeah. A lot of fun. It was great, great. Very informative. You come to Vegas, make sure you do this tour. It was great. It was awesome. It really Highly was. recommend. Awesome. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I do it. You don't have to toot the horn, Red. They you don't, don't have to toot the horn. Yeah, I was going to tell you, you don't have to toot the horn. Guess what? Too many yeah, hey, just tooting it down here. The guy, hey, guys. All right, so we'll talk about the tour later. Um, let's get back to this Bob Cooley. And hello, everybody uh, that's in the room today. Uh, Joe Collada, he's in the room. All right? He doesn't joke a little. He's Joe Collada. <laughs> Joe Collada. <laughs> hey, Joe, how you doing, guy? If you're from Chicago in a certain age, you know the name Bob Cooley in Greylord. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, yes. Gambit. Gambit. Oh, Operation Gambit. We're going to talk about that today. But it wasn't Greylord. Right. Greylord. We did a whole episode on Greylord. All right. about everybody got busted up and down in Illinois from the southern Illinois up through Chicago, the whole deal. Um, Adam, have you ever thought of having Cooley on the show? So, Big Tuna, uh, according to Red, he cost too much. <laughs> That's what I heard. So I, I, I heard it from Red, according to Red. That's Don, what Gary Jenkins told me. Gary Jenkins told me he wanted to be on his show, but he, he, he said I, he just he don't pay. <laughs> no, I mean, you know what? If you have a book or something, you can promote a book or something like that. I, I'd love to, you know what I mean? That's what I usually look for. So, but but anyway, um, I uh, just, just wanted to say hi to a couple more people here. Don Chichio, Di Porzalo. Cooley had no honor. He wanted to save his own ass. He's the only guy that agrees with me that I know it. I know it, but he's the only guy that I've ever heard agree with me on that. Yeah. Um, so Chris Johnson should take a tour out to Lake Mead, hunt for bodies, barrels and bodies out of Lake Mead. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's going to be on the crime tour. Don't worry about it. We uh, That's 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 that coming. Crime tour is going to be something else, guy. <laughs> it really is. I've been working on this like a son of a. I'm telling you, this is gonna be this is gonna be special. It's gonna be really a lot of fun, and uh, it's gonna be good. The stuff I'm digging up, it's, it's great. All right, so um, Cooley, let's talk a little bit about him. He was born in 1943 to an Irish American family, which lived in the Greater Grand Crossing sections of Chicago's southeast side. Southeast. Yeah. Side. Which there isn't much of a southeast side. Yes, the there is. Of, well, the east side of Chicago. It's all the, black now. It's all black now. But the southeast side of east, southeast Chicago, big neighborhood. You're talking that whole. It used to be all area. Irish and Jewish. The Chicago Skyway and all that. That area. Yeah. The east of there. East, uh, of there. east Chicago. East Chicago is actually a little town. No, not East Chicago. Is, no. There is an eastern section of Chicago. Okay. It goes all the way down the lake. It's a it's bunch of... Uh, uh, Chicago, lake Michigan. For those of you not from Chicago. <laughs> it's a bunch of brick bungalows. All, all, all it is is brick bungalows. They're all the same. All right. So, so that's so that's where the area he was from. And um, his dad was a, a, a cop. His father was a cop. The southeast side. Yeah. Hegwish. Thank you, Hegwish. There you go, Sean Pender. You know you... Why can't I just come up with this? Hegwish. Great, Sean. Great, Sean. You're there. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Don Berlin, I wish I could go on the tour, but I guess I'll have to settle in my great pizza box and the little gun. Content's really great. Thank Bought you, it today. Bought it today. Bought it today. I'm making pizzas. Those of you that have them coming, because, uh, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Greg Bradshaw, one, one last week. Yeah. I'm out of 
Yeah. I'm out of pizzas, right? I got to manufacture more. I got to gotta make pizzas different than other people do. <laughs> than other people. Mine start square, and then I, I draw little circles on them. <laughs> and then I got to cut them out with the foam cutter. I may make a video of me doing that, this next batch that I make. But uh, <laughs> making pizzas like that. That's only how a Polak can make pizzas. Oh, I am. That's right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Hyde Park, the Hagwish, basically is that area. Thanks, Chicago Joe. Uh, Costa, Costa I, I'm sorry. I missed a couple of comments here. I just wanted to say hello. We have a couple new uh, new uh, viewers. And I got a kick out of what he said. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Chris Wood, thanks, Adam and Red. Uh, just started watching you guys. I'm a Chicago native living in California now, and you guys bring me back home. Uh, again, can't thank you enough. It's taken a trip down memory lane. Thanks for hanging out with us, Chris Wood, and, um, and everybody else. That's what we do here. That's what it's all about. Will Rojardo, haven't seen you in a while. Well, it's good to see you back. On a recent episode of Valuetainment, they said Frank Galata was the scariest interview than Sammy DeBull. All right. Everybody is – this has been mentioned – do you have the link to which video it is, Will? Can you go in your history and then send us the because nobody seem can seem to find this, and I'd love to find that clip of um I of, saw it one time out of all the ones I watched, I saw it one time and I don't remember where it's at. Patrick saying that. Patrick, yeah. I'd love to, yeah, I'd love to see that. So I haven't seen it. Um, I live in the southeast, mainly it's a Hispanic and blacks now, Juan Achoa. So all right, wait, is that Cooley set up? Is that Cooley? Wait, who was it that Cooley set up? Roddy? Others? Yes. Fred Roddy. Fred Roddy. Roddy. Sorry, Roddy. There I go. The names. <laughs> Fred Ro Roddy. And others. And others. Roddy. Uh, that's Roddy. Uh, he did that at the um, counselor's row. They put a wire in a counselor's row. And that's where all the lawyers used to get it. Roddy used to go in there with them, too. Okay, so let's That's start. That's where they found the uh, wiretap. All right. Before we get into wiretaps and all, let's start with this Bob Cooley. Now, we talked about he's from a line of cops, his whole family's cops, and he became, became a cop, a Chicago police officer. Now, it says that he became an informant in 1986. Now, at this point, was he already an attorney, a lawyer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he'd he been an attorney, a lawyer for a long time. He was a high roller out in Vegas. He was a gambler. He used oh. to bet on everything. He used to bet on everything, but he used to take these junkets to Vegas and spend. He was in debt. He was in debt so bad it was pathetic. Really? The IRS was all over him like a cheap suit. And all, he goes into the U.S. attorney's office after he found out he was in trouble with the IRS. Actually, I found out through Tom Moriarty, who was IRS CID at the time. But anyway, uh, when he gets up there, he's trying to wangle a deal so he does he says i'll give you the mob they're fixing cases in the courtroom and he did okay so and that way he avoided being indicted his debts were gone because he put everybody in prison <laughs> he had to go into he put away the people he owed money to smart guy yeah. <laughs> i give him that that's smart you know that's thinking that's like all right so if i give these guys up and i don't all I got to do is pay my taxes now. <laughs> have been in the situation he was in, though. He shouldn't have put himself in that situation. Uh, and he wrote a book called When the Corruption Was King. Okay, so he's got a book out, too, about yes. this whole deal. Yes. And have you read it? Yes, I have. Okay, and what do you think of the book? What's your opinion? I think it's slanted in his, his favor. I mean, he gives his, his own opinions of what really took place. He okay. avoids telling that he was in trouble. <laughs> that he went, he went in because he was in trouble. So I took offense to that in the sense that I wasn't in trouble when I went in. I, 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 I went in just out of my own free will. It wasn't because I had a beef or something to work off. Got it. So, so uh, this wrote uh, Fred uh, Rody, Alderman Fred Rody was first ward, right. Okay, now back then, first ward, that was at Pat Marcy as well, right? Pat Marcy was the committee man. Okay. So uh, did Bob Cooley hang around with that Pat Marcy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They all knew each other. Okay. So... Pat Marcy used to go to him and, and say, can you fix this for me? Can you can you fix this case for me? A lot of them. They were all, if somebody went to, like, 
if Joey Lombardo or uh, Phil Alderisa, somebody wanted a case fix, they go to Pat Marcy and say, can you take care of this for me? So Marcy. Okay, he takes care of it. And his real name name was Pasquale. I forget what his, I I can't pronounce it. Okay. So this Bob Bob Cooley, he was a degenerate gambler that would have, uh, that have, that would have given his left nut to be a real gangster, <laughs> according to Don Chichio. You're giving us not to be a real gangster. This guy was a wannabe. Kind of. Okay. Okay. I think he used to throw his weight around and say, if anybody gave him a hard time, he throws his weight around and drop names. <clears throat> okay. Just trying to paint the picture of who this guy, who this guy was. Very right? arrogant. A very arrogant guy. <laughs> so Fred Roddy used to run Roddy. And Roddy. His- Roddy. <laughs> Oh my <laughs> that's what red's here though red's here to make sure i say these things properly and correctly <laughs> <laughs> roadie used to run roadie and his family used to run the bridgeport neighborhood yes yeah bridgeport neighborhood okay and he was also uh harry ailman's attorney this bob cooley brian glade to say it was his attorney i don't think he was he fixed the case on ailman though but it was another lawyer that he went to and he gave him the money. Then he gave the money to Judge Wilson and Judge Wilson fixed the case. And Judge Wilson uh, blew his brains out when they came out with um, Operation um, Grey Lord. Grey Lord, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I remember talking to Frankie Forleano about that whole thing. That, that was the judge she mentioned blew, her, blew his brains out, right? Right. Which, he just when he got the notice he saw it on tv he walked out in the backyard of his home and stood next to a tree so the bullet wouldn't go anywhere and shot himself in the head oh my gosh his wife uh, was inside um that's unbelievable uh, outfit boss, did bob cooley have any involvement with the uh outfit did bob cooley have any involvement with the outfit yeah yeah uh, it's like i have a question i'm I thought we covered that. It was like I thought we did too. <laughs> okay, so Pete, Peter Swob Swoboda 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 Peter Swoboda Swoboda Swoboda. Yeah. All right. From past news reports, Carol Marion Cooley made it a point to know if he was under investigation from the feds before he started talking. That's correct. Carol Marion. Is that the real name, Bob Robert's real name? Carol. No, his name is Cooley, Bob Cooley. Oh, M- Carol Marin's a news reporter, I'm guessing. Right. Uh, okay, got it. So, uh, Scott H., they used to meet at a bar called Counselor's Row. Cooley was a fixer who mediated between the outfit and City Hall. So, right. he, he, he sounds like marcy was uh yeah judge took only ten thousand dollars to fix that case You're talking about the case with um harry ailman harry ailman Murdered. yeah i don't uh, know why we call it the harry ailman case i don't even remember the, the person he killed okay pat marcy his name was pasquale marchone thank you it's not marciano marciani marciani <laughs> it's marchone thanks for giving me the pronunciation though i would have said Marcioni. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. All right. So uh, I don't think Cooley was Harry uh, Ailman's attorney. I think he was represented by Herb Barcy or Mickey Kaplan. Don, I believe you're correct. It was not Mickey Kaplan, though. It was the other one you mentioned. So Herb Bar- Barcy? Right. Okay. So I believe. To the best of my recollection. Th- thanks, Peter. Uh, uh, Peter Carol Marin uh, was a news reporter and anchor for uh, WMAQ TV. Okay, now he's retired. So, uh, Ailman tried. Oh yeah, Ailman's the only guy tried for double jeopardy. That's correct. Watch the Harry Ailman video that we did though. With uh, actually, actually, there was no double jeopardy because the jury was or the judge was fixed. So there was. He took a bench trial. Got it. And the judge said, ah, there's not enough evidence here. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm going to find him not guilty. <laughs> do you remember the bowl hat that Cooley used to wear? Yes, I do. 
Bowl hat? What's that mean? It was a round hat. He was bald. So he, it was like a, I, it's a crazy hat. Like a tamarind. Like a tamarind. A tamarind? What the hell is a tamarind? They're Irish. It's an Irish thing. I'm going to have to look that up in the after show. Tamarind. We'll put a picture up on the screen. Oh, come on. You've seen, you've seen tamarinds before. Everybody has. It would be Marciani. See? In Italian, it would be, but it wasn't an Italian name, I guess. So, Marshall. Right. Bob Cooley would never be on this show because Cooley never admitted his own wrongdoing. That's a fact, Mike. That's a fact. Thank you, Graham. Uh, appreciate that. Did, he takes up. issue with it to this day. He, to this day, there's facts. You can go look them up, but he takes issue with it. Hey, guys, do the outfit uh, still have connections to the Chicago City Hall? Does the outfit still have connections no. to the Hall? What? Are you kidding? What outfit? Come on. Seriously. <laughs> Good to see you, Homer. Uh, Don Berlin. And actually, Herb Barcy was Frank's attorney as well back in the day. He was the last of what was known as the B-Boys, which would actually be a fascinating topic. All right, we've heard about the B-Girl joints, Red. <laughs> B-Boys. B and if we go where you think you're going with this, what, what, what are they? What's the B-Boy? Red. What? I have you know, no idea. You don't know what a big boy is? I never oh, heard that before. Okay, well, um, we're going to find out because I'm going to keep reading comments. So I'm sure it's going to come up. If Jack O'Malley didn't have Ailman uh, retried, O'Malley could have gone places politically. Interesting. He could have. They all could have. He, he threw a monkey wrench in the works. They all could have. Everything would have been the same. Would have been all different. Big dog, non-vet. During Greylock, Grey Lord, you could drag a body into the into the court. The right judge would say, "Nothing to see here." <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> My God, huh? That's crazy. I mean, we know Chicago's corrupt, and we know how the you know how they are there. I mean, it's you know, it's. I lived it. I know it. I was there. <laughs> Percy was a made guy in the outfit and had tons of Chicago political power, probably more than the mayor. He was very close to Tony Accardo. He was, huh? Yes. Wow. And Paul uh, Rica, going all the way back. I mean, he knew everybody. He liked just being the boss of the first ward. Got it. A Mick Beret about that hat that he wore, called it a Mick beret that's a nickname for it so um thanks chicago joe because i wouldn't have seen the comment if you hadn't uh if you hadn't said that i, I went right past me um, it's because he had a bald head he bald it early he lost his hair early so he put it on you know rather than a rug he didn't want him to to pay the, the thumbnail to this i mean you know in the thumbnail you see his head's bald and he's young there in that thing now i guess I he's like 35 37 somewhere around there i think he's doing uh yoga stuff now right <laughs> last time when i looked it up no i'm serious it's like different stretches and stuff for your body makes your body feel feel good well how old is he now he's got to be he's born to 44 um corruption was king uh he was born in 43 which would make him 79 yeah 79 so it make him 79 right now but didn't isn't he the guy who does the does the um the stretching yeah i don't know oh. what he's doing now it's on oh, the internet genius of flexibility bob cooley that's him I'm not. I'm not flipping out here. I think I'm almost positive. But <laughs> we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the guy. I don't want to talk about the wrong guy and give out wrong information. So I just want to show you what I'm looking at, so that you know what I'm looking at. So um, back to the comments. I'm going to put that picture up in just a few minutes, guys. Oh, and we got to spin the wheel of a deal that you can't refuse. Right here on Mob Vlog, we got a trivia question from last week. Last week, this uh, Greg Bradshaw on a pizza box so yes, yeah so we're gonna spin that so don't go anywhere and then we'll have a winner call in to the show we're live right now it is wednesday the 6th redness day 6th of july you believe it? Hey, did you, did you have a good fourth of july red 
Very good. Yeah. Very good. I good. started to heal on the 4th of July, man. So it you was good. I started to heal. Ah. Well, that's I good. I was sick again. <laughs> You're feeling better, though. That's good. I'm feeling great. Um, Don Ciccio, Lightfoot hates Italians. She told us she has the biggest dick in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, is Cooley in hiding, Red? He was. He, he was in witness protection. He came out, and I don't know what happened to him. Uh, kind of like I am. I mean, he just doesn't make himself available to the public, period. But he's got his own reasons. What's the favorite dinner of the guys at Counselor's Row? Mine was prime rib. <laughs> Somebody uh, asked that earlier. What was my favorite dinner there? I like prime rib. Okay, what was the favorite dinner of the guys at Counselor's Row? But okay. Um, uh, Ro Romanian language is very similar with Italian. Marshone, Thessabolix Rex from Romania. Thank you very much for chiming in with that. You know, these are the kinds of things that you learn on Mob Flog. <laughs> things you never thought you would learn. There's a wealth of knowledge in the comments department. <laughs> it, it really is. No, it really is. But that's what makes the show. So nobody likes Lori Lightfoot, right? So the commun communists have ties to the current city hall. <laughs> All right, Scott. So, um, I don't know what the current boys. situation is there, but I see the news on all the murders and I don't, it's not like it used to be. That's all. <laughs> you wouldn't have known today's city hall. No, of course. Of course. Uh, okay. Don Berlin, uh, Bieber, Brodkin, Barcy, Bellows, Bush, we're all the top mob attorneys in Chicago. That's why they called them the B boys. Oh, makes the correct started with B. And Red knocks it out of the park. Because <laughs> I didn't make connection. All right. <laughs> they they usually go over my head, but that one didn't. <laughs> the last trial they had was U.S. versus Roy Lee Williams. Oh, yeah. Thank, That's you, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who was it? The What, what union? Ray Lee Williams was uh, with the Teamsters. Teamsters Union. Okay. Right. He was president uh, of the Teamsters. Okay. So, old man Daly was friends with my grandfather. He was a water department boss. Oh, he thanks. was a friend of mine. I, I liked uh, Rich, uh, Senior. Not the Junior. Dude. Yeah. What junior. was your, what was your connection? I believe. What was your connection with him? I was an electrician. I was working at the county building across the way. And um, he uh, saw me and I had this bright curly hair like Diane Hansen said. It was bright curly hair and everything. And he saw me walking away. And he said, fine Irish lad. He talked with a brogue. And he said, fine Irish lad. He said, he talked to me for a few minutes. And he said, uh, Vince Gamble was his bodyguard at the time. And um, he called me over and I said, what are you doing here? And I said, I work over, you know, on the county side. And he said, if you ever want a real job, come over here to the city side. It was in the same building. The county building was on Clark Street, and City Hall was on LaSalle. Nah. But he was a real nice guy. Real nice guy. I hey, liked him. Hey, Don Berlin, it's Gerard. It's Gerard in the comments. So, you know. Hey, uh, Rick Charlton, I'm sorry I didn't email you back. I got so busy, but I read that. I thought that was fascinating about the church out here super fascinating um i'm gonna i'm going i'm going to write you back i just got really busy over the last few days but i did get a chance and thank you for sending that to me i read it to a couple of my friends even and said you're not going to believe this and then when i saw it, look the angels on the so Brad, we got to get it we'll we, we'll get into this in the after party i got to put a picture of that church up but it's a, we'll talk about it later but no that's that was something really cool uh bush it's bush as in we have as in we have bush oh sorry uh, bush. bush bush it's bush right Not bush all right so right. Yeah. that's that's it so um uh these names pop back to me i i remember them but bush it was bush, bush. yeah all right so um chi key like key from kim bassinger mark Marchion, Marchion. Oh, it'd be like Marchion, and so Marchioni, Italian. Marchion right. in Romanian, 
and Marshon in what the hell language is that? Marshon. What is he? What 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 nationality? See, I don't even know. Somebody's got it. Uh, Harry Bush, Bush. Oh, Harry Bush, Harry Bush. That reminds me of Hillary Clinton. You know when Bill was elected, she looked. Yeah. Up, she said, Read my lips. No more Bush. <laughs> Read my lips. Read my hips. <laughs> no, we won't raise raise taxes. <laughs> Read my lips now. Read my hips. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's uh that's awful. Harry Bush was the last living member of the B Boys, and he and Sherman Magid Magidson represented Joey Lombardo in the Roy Lee Williams case. But right. Herb Marcy was Frank C's attorney and got him off. That's correct. Wow. Don, you're on it again, guy. <laughs> oh, hello, all. Finally made it. Good to see you. you're here, uh, Anthony. Hope that your day is going well and uh, everything's going going well for you. Wouldn't wouldn't E wouldn't Marchi own Marchion be French? Marchion. No, French? no. That's the way you pronounce it. Okay. Well, we could tell that uh, Duke of Dunhurst is uh, cracking up. He's rolling around on the floor wherever he is. And <laughs> hey, Brett, <laughs> how you doing? Got some of the devil's lettuce over there, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> Brett, who's Fat Herbie? Fat Herbie? Who's Fat Herbie? Fat Herbie was out here. He was in Vegas. Herbie Brett was told a lot about Fat Herbie. Herbie. Yeah, he, he worked for Tony, and uh, there's... He was shot inside his house out here. Not outside, everyone, inside. I made a mistake. Deal. I like this guy's comment. <laughs> I agree, Red. Daly Sr. was great. Junior sucked. Byrne was cool and started Chicago, Chicago Fest. Fest. Did Jane Byrne start Chicago Fest? Yes. Really? It was called the Taste of Chicago. It, it was still called is called Taste of Chicago, but back then, was it Chicago Fest? It, yeah, the first one was, yeah. But then it turned to Taste of Chicago. Right. I went to it twice. I lived there all my life. I only went to it twice. But man, we're talking about walking around, eating everything around. Ah, oh, Satan salad. That's right. <laughs> that's what that Brett's putting together over there, William Kirchmayer. <laughs> <laughs> I got Satan salad over here too, Scott H. <laughs> Jesus, you guys are too much. Uh, um, Harry Bush was Bush. I mean, Harry Bush was my grand. You know what, Red? They're going to start thinking that I screw these names up intentionally. And they're not intentional, trust me. <laughs> Harry Bush was my grandfather's attorney, and it was pronounced Bush, not Bush. Thank you, Bill Mason. I, I appreciate that. It's Bush, not Bush. So, anyway. Sean Pender. Sean Pender's got a good comment here. Sean Pender. Chicago Fest was... On Navy, on Navy Pier. Pier. No, it, it ran down no, the, the first one was on Navy Pier. Oh, the first oh one thank, you, Navy thank you, thank you. I got it. I got it. Got it. Okay. Anyway, back to the point. Don Berlin. Uh, Robert Cooley was one of the fixers for the B-Boys, but he could not try a case out of a paper bag with holes in it. He wasn't a good attorney. Not a good attorney at all, huh? No. He was a good fixer. So he was more of a go-between guy who knew everybody who was... Uh... Oh, he knew people from both sides. <laughs> okay, so he knew people from both sides. So in 86, he claims that he's disgusted with the people that he's working for. And as Bob Cooley... <laughs> he's disgusted with his debts. <laughs> his, his bookie was on him all the time. Which bookie? He had several. <laughs> Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you, Adam. No, that's what we're here for. Okay. He was a crooked cop. Brian Glade, you're right. Yes. Street stories. Good to see Brian Glade. Uh, so when I was at Moody Bible Institute, they t they had a taste of Moody, which was local restaurants bought food over for free. Thanks for sharing that. Okay. But hold on. Let's get back to this Bob Cooley. So he, he gets upset with these people he's working for. So he walks in. To the U.S. Justice Department Organized Crime Strike Force. Strike Force, yeah, attorney. And declares, quote, I'd like to help you destroy the first ward and Pat Marcy. I want to help you destroy Pat Marcy, yeah? 
So what do you think of that? Oh, Chicago like Mike. Gary Shapiro. <laughs> Chicago Mike. Thanks for the super sticker. I love your moniker, man. I like the, the Captain Crunch. That's that's cool, man. You know, I like the round ones. Some people like the square ones, but I like the round ones. Hi, Red. <laughs> My father used to play poker with Mike Sp Mike Spano. Or is yes. he? All right. I said it correctly. With yes. Mike Spano. And he said he would eat the cards when mad. He would eat the cards when mad. Dad did all the des all the decals for flash trucking. Oh, flash trucking. Were the Spanos powerful? Never heard much about them. Yeah. Love the stream NPYS. Love the stream NPYS. I don't know what that means. Mike Picardi. I said that one right. Picardi. That's funny. He said he used to play cards with Mike Spano, his dad, and he said we eat the cards. You know what? Yeah. Yeah, you see somebody he get so mad he, when he lose when he he lose yeah. all the time. He's a degenerate gambler. He always lost, but when he lose, he he tear him up or throw him down or just no, get rid of him. Here's what the problem, Chicago Mike. You get mad and you go end up eating the cards. Then <laughs> you, <coughs> you got you got to the cards up. You know what I mean? You got to get rid of them. <laughs> you can't let them in there, Mike. If you don't get them out that way. Paper cuts from hell back here, buddy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Seriously, get them fuckers out. <laughs> hey, we're going to do a spin the wheel of a deal you can't refuse. That's coming up in a few minutes. We got a trivia question for you from last week. I said to Red, I said, Red, I said, I know what the trivia question should be. And we came up with one. And no. He we changed did. it at the last minute today. <laughs> I didn't change it. Ryan Brown, thanks for the super sticker. Red, Harry Aylman killed Billy Logan because he was married to his cousin, and they were going through a divorce and custody battle. It was a personal hit because he insulted Harry. That Billy That's Logan hit? That's a fact. And, and, a and fact. I don't remember it as a Billy Logan murder. I always remember it as a Harry Aylman case. Harry Aylman case. Uh, but it was Billy Logan. You're right. Thank you for refreshing my memory. Yeah, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, you guys are funny. The comments are hilarious. Um, so Scott H., my cousin went to school at Moody Bible College in the 70s. The outfit was in full glory then, and the SDS student bombers. You think it's crazy now? The SDS. You know something, Scott, since you brought this up, I have to tell you, the Moody Bible Institute did not get along with me. They were right down the street, and they used to come and pick at me. Some of the oh students. My God. So I went over there and I talked oh to the uh, I talked to the dean over there and I told him I said, "What are you gonna? You know, you can't have these guys on the street. They're young kids. They're like eighteen years old. You know, something like that. Right. They're on the street and they're picketing the place and say, don't go in to this porn shop or whatever.'" And he said, "There's nothing I can do about it." And I said, "If there isn't anything you can do about it, I'll do something about it." And I did. <laughs> so here's probably how that little uh, Bob Cooley intro went with the U.S. Strike Force. Instead of saying, I'd like to help you destroy the first ward, Michael Graham said, probably was more like, I'm a degenerate gambler who can't handle my gambling debt anymore and am willing to give up everyone I owe money to. The joke, the, the very true, about Mike. Uh, the joke with uh, Tom Moriarty and myself was, he came in and said, have you ever heard of Monty Hall? Let's make a deal. Uh-huh. That's the joke. That's that's it. That's what he that's what he's allegedly said. Have you ever heard of Monty Hall? Let's make a deal. Got it. Um. So, so I, I missed a couple of comments here, guys. I'm just going to look. Adam looks like Mark Stein from the band Vanilla Fudge. Watch the Ed Sullivan show clip. Tell me I'm wrong. Okay, I'm gonna have to look that up. Sixty-seven, Vlad. We'll do that in the he after. Look like anybody I've ever known. <laughs> No, okay, like somebody Adam. asked Somebody asked last week, so here, we're about to do the trivia question in a couple of minutes because we're going to wrap up this Bob Cooley. we got a few other things that we want to cover before, we, uh, before we, we wrap it all up. Somebody said that he's living, there's a documentary, he's living somewhere out in the edge of the desert somewhere. Um, Probably in, in uh, Arizona. He, he loved to fix cases in the 5th Municipal District Court. That's correct. According to William Davidson. Uh, but he fixed them everywhere. Yeah. 
Big Tuna. Seems like Cooley just got along with the right people at the right time. Man, they say timing's everything. It was. It was. Sure. Sure. Uh, I had the same experience. I got along with the right people at the right time. That's all. Yeah. Well, it, it's, uh, yeah. It's, uh, Don Chichio. Mike S. is the boss of Cicero. Um, I don't know. Cicero? I don't know. No. I don't know. Sarno. He means Mike Sarno. J Joe Collada said, my brother didn't know Red. No. Frank no. did not know Red. Never met Red. Um, that would happen all afterwards. The only uh, thing that uh, said, what did Collada think of Red? So uh, I'll tell you really quickly how this came to tell be. The truth. Tell them the truth. So, so, so there were a few comments put into a video that I put up of Frank. And it was Red made some comments. And Red, I wouldn't say Red challenged Frank, but Red basically put a comment out there that he, letting Frank know that he knew the same people, okay? It's some which right. way, right? And I heard a lot about Frank. I saw I the comment. He was always in prison. <laughs> I saw the comment. And, and guys, so Frank, Frank would read the comments and he would get on and he would look at them. But I did all the responding to the comments. Right up to the end there, I would sit with Frank at his computer and I would sit there and literally type what Frank wanted me to type back to the people. But for the most of the time, they were generic answers and generic uh, thank you for watching, that kind of thing. But it helps the algorithms. Okay, so let me move this along quickly because we got to get to the spin the wheel of a deal that you can't refuse. So <laughs> the the comments were there. I read them to, to Frank and said, who is this Red Wimette? Frank said to me, He's a guy who owned the porn shop and he wore a wire. Okay. All right. That's what Frank thought or read. That should answer the question, right? I never wore a wire. That's I had my house was. wired. <laughs> that's, that's, all he, that's all he knew about it. So all he knew about the, the thing about it. So anyway, uh, Keith Helton, thanks for helping Frank. I, I Look, I did what I did for Frank because that's from the heart what I was supposed to do. There was nothing. I was doing nothing else that. I had nothing to do except, except that. And you need to see somebody who needs help, you help them. And that's how it goes. So I mailed you something, Joe Collada. All right. Um, it was, it uh, in case it was directed at my question, I meant, I, I meant, I meant now. Sorry. Uh, I meant, I don't know. Olive Tuske Coke. Olive Tuske Coke. Uh, chance you guys could do Michael Corbett next. Corbett, Michael Corbett. Oh, Willow Mo Springs. Corbett. He's not Willow a Springs, not corrupt cop. Okay. Police. It's Corbett, like Smollett, not Smollett. Irish Corbett. <laughs> okay. Remember the old boxer, James J. Corbett? Yes. Yes. Trace, you became good friends too. Yeah, you could you could say that. Um, definitely did, and it was a. It was a it was a pleasure. I don't know what else what, what else to say about that. Uh, to Frank, planting a camera was the same as wearing a wire. Yeah, it's exactly what it was. I agree. It, it was just a short synopsis. He didn't know anything about me. He had no reason to. And believe me, I think he had a lot of problems at the time. <laughs> Got it. Um, I'm sorry, Paul Clinton. I am not seeing your whole comment. We're about to spin the wheel. We're going to ask the question. Last week, um, last week, we talked about several things. And I'm sure you guys are going, okay, what's this question going to be? Because somebody's going to get to call in in a couple of minutes here. And if they want to go uh, on air and talk, uh, that's great. Um, we'll, we'll do that. So his story is fascinating. Supposedly ran willow springs was friends with ryan that caifano blew up and transporting vegas ray ryan ray ryan in in and um evansville indiana got it okay 1979 michael graham adam the next guest on the show should be a dialect coach very funny <laughs> michael very funny <laughs> Uh, <laughs> look at the olive comment again. Oh, uh, you guys, olive comment again. Um, sorry, guys. We're so anyway. Here's what the question was going to be as I go searching for this uh, in the comments. 
Um, so I'll tell him what the question was going to be. No, 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 wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Here's what the question. We got the question. I got the answer. It's on a piece of paper. Okay. First person <laughs> to get that answer is the one who's going to win. But here's what we were going to make the question. We we're going to make the question this, and I, I'm just going to, I'm going to ask it just to see if anybody gets it. This is not the question. Okay. For the wheel spin. This is no. just to see if you guys can get this. Because Red thinks that I'm coming up with stuff that's too hard. Okay? All right. Last week, somebody <laughs> said, to Red, they said, Red, he thinks I'm coming up with stuff that's too hard. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, here it is. Last week, somebody said, this isn't the question. I'm going to be just make this clear, okay? I just want you guys to see, see, see if many can get this. Here we go. So, last week, I said... Somebody asked, what porn star does Adam look like? And I said, oh, I don't look at any porn stars. But I do have a porn star name. Does anybody remember what my porn star name was? This is the real question, guys. No, this is not the real question, Red. I just said a million times, this is not the real question. We're going to do the real question in a minute. This you isn't the real on me. <laughs> This isn't the real. I knew you were going to get it flipped up. That's why I said, don't ask it. But anybody okay. remember? See, because this could be too hard. I need to know what my level I think is. it's too hard. Uh, you know, I only said it one time, and it's a difficult. Long... Look difficult. Yeah. Let me change yeah. it. <laughs> so, but nobody remembers. See, nobody. German name. You're right, outfit boss. It is a German name, and and and. Uh, oh, you're so close. You're so wow. We actually got people that are getting close to this. It was Rob von Hugenstein. So close, Keith Helton. No, it's not Rod von. It's it, that's what it is, but it's not the beginning is wrong. It's not Rod. It was different. Oh, but actually, it is. No, there's one word in front of Rod. It's something Rod. Yes, you guys, no one really. See, we can't even remember. I said it was too hard. It was Monster Rod von Hugenstein. See, so but all right. Anyway, nobody see that was too hard. So we have to ask one. And if you guys think that that's hard. This is what the question is. Are you ready? We're going to spin the wheel of a deal you can't refuse. <laughs> Here's the question, guys. In the very beginning. Oh, before you answer the question, by the way, you need to have, you need to have, um, geez, Scott H, too hard. That's the other thing, right? Hey, I told you it was a hard question. No pun intended. Difficult, difficult. <laughs> Hard question. Get, see what I did there? Hard? See what I did there? Yes. Pun? Not a hard, too hard. Of a, oh, right. God. All right, here we go. So. <laughs> I'm still go. laughing inside. I can't help it. <laughs> to answer the question and to ring in, you have to have a phone. You have to be able to give a mailing address in case we need to send something to you. Okay, the prize. When you I'm, win. So that's what it is. Here's the question. Street stories. Anthony Demartini. He likes to make videos for the channel. Anthony made an intro video recently. And the intro video looks just like this. And we've played it a whole bunch of times. I'm just going to play a couple seconds. Now, in that video, you see guests pop up. Denny Griffin, Anthony, Red. There's businesses in the background, background of the shot. You see when it starts, you see Circus Circus in the background. You also see Westward Ho. We didn't see, see, anything. We didn't see anything, guy. Play it where you can see one frame. Oh, you didn't see anything? No. Okay, you see Westward Ho. You see Circus Circus. You see the Pioneer Saloon. You see the Flamingo in the background. What is the last business that you see in the intro background? What and, is the last casino? And the last business, the last casino. That's what we're looking for. No, it's not Circus Circus. Mm, Stardust is not the last. We see the Stardust. Not the last, guys. The last casino. 
Not the sand. Not the Riviera. Not Berkeley. Not the frontier. I told you they were going to do this, Adam. You said no. <laughs> Fort <laughs> Queens. We're getting closer, but no. <laughs> no, not the Pioneer. The Hilton, the Frontier, the DI, wrong. No, no Hacienda. Chris, is that the dead thing? No. No. Still there. Hint number one. The Riviera, no. Your name is never Casino, but the one. <laughs> Not the MGM brand, not Pinions. Not the Dunes. Y'all are so close, <laughs> great friend. Y'all are so close. Been close, it's not the Desert Inn, it's not the Vegas Club. Close, but no, no cigar. Big Bro, just one. The Golden Nugget is the last Big one. Bro. <laughs> we got a winner, Big Bro. It, that's that's the winner right there uh so big mo you got to call in the number on the bottom of the screen that you see right there you're going to call that number and uh we're going to verify you and as soon as we verify you we'll put you on the show live if you want uh if you don't we won't put you on live we'll just spin the wheel with you on the phone so call i'm going to type i'm going to type the number in for you big mo it's uh what is it adam in case they can't see it here six seven seven oh two Call the number 677-9015, area code 702. You're the winner today, Big Mo. <laughs> Anytime the phone will ring, and then we're going to wrap it up. And who's this Cor Corbett? Here we go. I'll be right back. Yes. While Adam's gone. Hey, yeah, Big Mo, he's trying to get you. <laughs> Adam is a nugget. Thank you, Bill. Love the comments. Since everybody has a moniker, it's very interesting when somebody comes and is, they have like Big Mo or um, they don't have their names out there like Scott H. Or Luminous Grin doesn't have a name, his real name. Here's that. And he's back. Verified. Red. We are on live right now with Big Mo. And how are you doing today, Mo? I'm doing great. I enjoy watching you guys. Awesome. Well, how long have you been watching the show? Oh, ever since when, when Frank was around. Um, I, Over two years. I'm originally from Chicago. I was a, I've always been... Uh, a connoisseur, I guess, a fan of organized crime stories, books, anything like that. And when I got a hold of that Family Secrets uh, book, I just eat that. I still listen to it on on Audible when I do my uh, lawn and stuff like that. Awesome. So, <laughs> so that's cool, man. I'm glad that you enjoy the show. You like the stories with Red? Oh, yeah. Hey, Red, you want to say hi to Mo? Hey, Mo, how you doing, guy? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Hey, Red, I contacted you on Facebook a while back. I wanted to see if I can, um, like, see. I, I always catch the videos of you and uh, Frank Schweiss doing the undercover deal, but I, I never can get the full video. So I was always trying to figure out where I can go see uh, the rest of those. Uh, those They're only on Adam's channel. Adam, Adam has all the videos. Not all the videos, but I only yeah. gave them to Adam exclusively. We haven't we haven't posted all of them because we have to transcribe them. It's really hard to hear some of them, so without putting the words on the screen, and that takes a lot of time. But we're working on it, and uh, we'll have okay. them up there. Yeah. Well, like I said, Adam, like I told you before, I'm I'm looking to try to um, come out there next week, and I'm, I want to hit that tour. Oh, definitely love to see uh, love to see you on uh, love to if see. If you don't win it, if you don't win it on the. On the wheel of the deal, <laughs> um, don't forget use uh, use mob code the, the, the code. Yeah, for, use, use use mob vlog as a code, and that'll uh, that'll get you on there. So, yeah, I got give you. Discount, give you a discount, guy. Um, okay, twenty percent off. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, so you guys, you ready to spin the uh, spin the wheel? Yes, spin it. All righty, here we go. So. All the prizes we've gone over and spin. And 
you won a free USB gun. So you're going to get shipped one of these USB guns right here. And uh, they're really cool. They got the little uh, logo on the bottom, the mob tour. And there's 16 gigs of information on here. You get the first interview that Frank did, uh, which is uh, basically the vault videos unedited. Uh, it was called Colada. You also get the Last Vegas mobster, which is on there. And then you get nine hours. Uh, the audio, the Blood Brothers is also on there. And um, some extras, some pictures off of Frank's okay. phone and video off of his phone. So some uh, some cool stuff. But, You'll like uh, it. You'll like it, Bo. I, I'll tell you what. Um, it was good having you on, though. Thanks so much. You're the lucky winner. And Bobby Bag of Donuts, I'm going to call you in a minute. Um, so, uh, here's red for just a second, guys. We'll be right back. Red is not here. I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. All oh, right. I so, I went, you cut me out. <laughs> so, so it you looks on the screen going. <laughs> so, so look, look here. Look here. We made a mistake, Red. It happens. A human. Yeah. I thought I made a mistake once. I was mistaken. You were mistaken. You made a mistake. Bobby <laughs> Bag of Donuts. He guessed Sands, Frontier, and then Bobby guessed Golden Nugget. And he guessed it before. He guessed it before Big Mo. He guessed oh, it no. answers before. They were going by so fast, I didn't see it. So it went went by. Well, so, give Bobby Baker Donuts the same deal. Don't don't don't. So, so wait, a second, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on. All right. So we can on. do it twice today. No, 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 no. No, we, we'll make this right. Hey, you don't have to. No, we're gonna make it right. Okay, here we go. <laughs> you got to come and have dinner with me. You have to bring you and Ellie and come have dinner at my house. Oh, Bobby, Bobby. I'm spinning the wheel a second time. Here we go. <laughs> and a spin. We're off. <laughs> what show gives two winners? <laughs> and, oh, a buy one, get one free for the mob tour, Bobby. You want to spin right. again? Because you've been on the tour before. Spin again. It's like go. if he already had Red's book, we aren't going to give him another book. You know, that just doesn't make sense. You're getting an autographed yeah. picture of Red and I. <laughs> hey. I'm trying to, I'm trying to turn on the, on the box. There we go. You get a picture, Bobby. Awesome, man. Hey, um, it, 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 it's been cool. Let me call you back after the show. I'll get your address, yeah, okay? No, no All right. problem. Bye-bye. Yeah, oh, wow, Red. It's been fun today. Did you have a good time? Hey, it's upside oh, yeah. down, Red. <laughs> hey there we go look red signed it already he's got it signed and then i'm gonna sign it when he gets them to me because he's got to send them to me and then you guys if you guys want one they'll be on mobmento.com too and we'll personalize it to you if you want one so mobmento.com frankculata.com they all go to the same site there that's the store page and that's where you can get it hey red it's been fun man you ready to do this on your channel i sure am Okay, we're going to go over there. We'll meet you guys Anybody there. Come after over, party. Join the after show party. Come on over. Yeah, we can continue on uh, about the Chicago outfit. We'll have a lot of fun, and uh, I'll see you over there. So, guys, ladies, gentlemen, and others. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of covering yourself. It's been fun. It's been fun. <laughs> it's been fun, and... Uh, we are going to see you guys uh, at the uh, after party. So thanks, Red. God bless. And uh, have a great week. See you over there. See you, buddy.